In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We will continue our series concerning the sacraments of the church. Uh, if you remember with me how many sacraments we discussed so far? Anybody remember? How many sacraments we spoke about? Two sacraments. Do you remember which ones? Yes? Baptism and holy oil. And we agreed that we always start with huh? baptism. This is the first sacrament that has to be performed or practiced by any believer who wants to join the church of God. The sacrament of baptism. Then after receiving the baptism, and we spoke about what is exactly baptism means, and uh, what is the symbols of baptism in the Old Testament, and what happened in the New Testament, telling us the importance of the baptism. After the believer received the baptism, he has to be anointed with huh? Mayroon. Very nice. And we spoke about the meaning of the word Mayroon, and we spoke about we spoke about where we got the Mayroon from. You remember the story? And we spoke also about the importance of having the Mayroon to be anointed with. And we demonstrate with one of the deacons how Abuna, how Abuna anoint or make the sign of the cross with the holy oil on the newly baptized person. And we remember how many time how many times abuna has to anoint the person 36 36 times and when we count them we found that 36 covering all the joints and the organs of the body so my body and your body and everyone's body of the christians are anointed with the Mayroon, are protected by the Mayroon, and, uh, and, uh, and are sanctified by the Mayroon. Sanctified by the Mayroon. Today we will speak, or we'll start to speak about the third sacrament in the church. You remember how many sacraments we have in the church? Seven sacraments. We spoke about baptism, number one. Number two, the Holy Mayroon. And number three, something new. Repentance and confession. Repentance and confession. Sometimes we abbreviate the word and we say the confession, right? But it is, it is a repentance and confession. Do you know what exactly happened in this sacrament? What exactly happened in this sacrament? Think with me. Repentance and confession. Those who speak, please pay attention. What happened in the sacrament of repentance and confession? I think it's very obvious from the name, from the title itself. Repentance and confession. Go ahead. Abuna prays the absolution on him and uh, Can you repeat that in the microphone so they can hear you? Um the believer goes to Abuna and confesses his sins and then Abuna prays the absolution which uh, represents the forgiveness of God. Very good. What you said now, I give the title Confession. But you remember I say the sacrament's name has two words. Repentance and confession. You spoke about confession now. Thank you very much. What about repentance? He said, he said, that it is 
a repentance means that you stand before God alone and you pray to him saying that you regret what you did and what else? Asking for forgiveness, right? Okay. Is it only a prayer? Repentance means I pray and I regret about what I did and that's it. There is an important element in repentance. That's what we call regret. What else? Hmm. You have to stop doing it. You can't continue. Very good. Very good. You have to try your best. And that's what we call struggle in the spiritual life. You have to try your best to stop the sin that you're doing. You have to try your best. I didn't say you have to stop. Notice that. You have to try. So try is the key. As long as you're trying, you are repenting. You are in the process of repenting. If you succeed and you finish doing the sin and you never do it again, congratulations. But the importance is you have to try. You have to try. That's why in, def in, defining, in defining how to un identify the repentance and confession sacrament, we say it is a sacred sacrament in which the sinner returns to God and offers repentance for his sin and confess it in front of the priest to receive from him an absolution by the authority that is given to the priest from our Lord Jesus Christ. So the repenter or the repenting person gain the forgiveness of sin. This is what is the meaning of the sacrament of repentance and huh, confession. As we get used to say in every sacrament that we are speaking about, there is a scene, something happen, an unseen grace we receive. In baptism, we see Abuna having a baby in his hand and a font of, full of water, and he put the, the baby inside and outside the water. That is what we see. But actually, what is happening is we die with Christ and rise with him. This is the unseen grace that we receive. In the holy Mayroon, we see Abuna having oil in his hand or his finger, and he is making the sign of the cross on the baby or the, the newly baptized person. That's what we see. But actually what is happening is the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in this person. That's what we can't see, but we believe in it. So the grace which is unseen. What about repentance and confession? What is the seen part of it? And what is the unseen grace that we receive? Can anybody, can anybody say it? Hmm? The seen part is very easy. When you, when you go to church and you find that Abuna is busy taking confession, what do you see? What do you see? Hmm. You see certain things, you know that Abuna is taking confession, or this person is confessing to Abuna. Huh? They're having a joke together? They're laughing? What, what exactly, what do you see? Hmm. Go ahead. They are talking together very seriously. Very seriously. What else? Huh? You. The, um, the priest touched um, the cross and um, more, um, during um, this person uh, co is confessing, you touch uh, or the priest touched the cross and uh, get his sin get uh, your uh, like the person who's confessing uh, confessing um get his saints in the cross and then when you go pray you put uh, the cross on the altar on the altar 
thank you for this contemplation, but this is not exactly what we do. Thank you, it is, it is good that you think like that, but we can explain what is happening in, in, in the confession. But I want to know what you see, not what's happening, what you see. Yes. No, you forget one part. Abuna meet a lot of people, and he is talking very seriously with a lot of people, and then they kiss his cross and go. But in confession, there is something unique. What? Huh? Still talking about what is the matter. But you see at the end of the conversation what's happening. Bishoy. Very good. You find both of them are standing and the confessing person is the confessing person is putting his head down. Abuna put the cross on the head of the confessing person and pray the absolution. That's what you see. Now you know that this is a confession, right? Now you know it's not a conversation. It is a confession. So the person receive the absolution or the forgiveness of sin. This is the seen part. The unseen part is, I just said it now. Huh? Very good. The forgiveness of sin. God forgive the sin of this person. Finish. As if it didn't happen. As if it didn't happen. That's why if you want to answer any person who's going to ask you, why do you have to confess your sin? I'll give you a, 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 a statement that you put in your ear and know by your heart very well. This person who's asking you, he's tried to trick you, right? Why you confess to a human being, right? Rather than confessing to God, he wants to trick you, right? But you tell him that my belief is, I, in the confession, in the confession, listen to that. In the confession, I confess my sin to God in the ears of of Abuna. This is number one, the first part. Again, can we say this together? I, I confess my sin to God in the ears of Abuna. Very good. What then happened? And I receive the forgiveness of sin from God on the mouth or the tongue of Abuna. So who is actually present in the confession? God. Very good. So no one can tell you now that you are confessing your sin to a human being. No, I confess my sin to God in the presence of Abuna. In the presence of Abuna. Okay? You know now what is, what is the meaning of repentance and confession? Okay. In a few minutes... In a few minutes, I'm going to read for you some verses. Why? Because we get used to any sacraments that we're going to speak about. We have to look back to the Old Testament and see what God ordered the people to do concerning this sacrament. Or in another way, what is the roots of the sacrament in the Old Testament? First verses we're going to read, some, of ver some verses we're going to read. Is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Listen to this because God is speaking. God is speaking to the people of Israel and telling them how to confess. Imagine, there is confession in the Old Testament. Yes, there is. Listen to this. God is saying, If a person sins in hearing the utterance of an oath and is a witness whether he has seen or known of the matter, 
If he does not tell it, he bears guilt. So there is guilt, sin. Or if a person touches any unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and he is unaware of it, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touches human uncleanliness, whatever uncleanliness with which a man may be defiled, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty. God is saying kind of sins, kind of guilt. Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly, with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty in any of these matters. And it shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters, this is the important part, that he shall confess, very clearly said, he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest, here is the priest is present, shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. In brief, God is saying, if you are sinner, if you are a sinner, you have to go to the priest offering a sacrifice so the priest can pray for you and the, and the forgiveness will happen. Clear? Another verse in Numbers five, chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. God is telling Moses and saying, Speak to the children of Israel. When a man or woman commits any sin that men commit in unfaithfulness against the Lord and that person is guilty, then he shall confess the sin which he has committed. He shall make restitution for his trespass in full, plus one-fifth of it, and give it to the one he has wronged. So in the process of repentance, if I do a mistake to a person, I have to correct it. I have to correct it. It is not enough in the process of repentance and confessing my sin to just go and confess it and that's it if i hurt someone i have to correct it i have to correct it last two verses uh, in proverbs 28:13 he who covers his sins will not prosper but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy and in 2 Samuel 12, 13, So David, David the king, said to Nathan, the prophet, I have sinned. David is saying to the prophet, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan, the prophet, said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. You shall not die. Next time, God willing, we're going to see how our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament deliver his authority of giving the absolution to the apostles and how the church receive this authority. To him is due all glory from now and ever unto the ages of all ages. Amen. Hallelujah.